We're back. Uh, yeah, so this uh, woman's sort of losing the respect for our explorer, and uh, this man's also lost his respect for him. Literally tearing the contract. I thought, I feel like this is really heavy handed, but maybe he's. I, I don't know if it would have the same impact if it didn't say contract on the paper. I was. I debated this a lot. I eventually decided to have it say contract because if someone was just looking at this image without the context of the series, it would provide a little bit more... You, you wouldn't have to make as many assumptions, but then again, maybe uh, maybe it's unnecessary. It's something I, I was really uh, I was unsure about. But yeah, so this image, uh, one of the things I think is pretty good about it is the... This, this box, I have this sort of... If you've ever read the... Uh, I only know it's a French novel, but it's La Petite Prince, and it's it's about a boy who's living on a meteorite. This is extremely irrelevant normally, but there's a section in the book where the boy asks an older man to draw him a sheep, and the older man doesn't know how to draw a sheep, so the older man draws a box and says, well, the sheep's in the box. Uh, that's sort of a philosophy I have for drawing, where if I know I'll... If I know something is needed in the image, if it's like... If I want to draw, say, a... If I want to draw, like, a bunch of people hunting, or, like, I want to draw a small village, and I can't quite think of everything that would be reasonably displayed in a village, I can draw a couple boxes and crates around, and I can say, well, that's where those supplies are, that's where this thing is. The box, to me, until this point, had served as a... I'm gonna need a few more things... In, that I'm currently drawing to make sense of this series. And that's that's why I had this box in the boat the entire time. It was a... Uh, it was a um, cop-out, maybe. <laughs> uh, a safety precaution for me not knowing what to draw. So, in this box there's a shovel head, a map, and a frying pan. All of these get used pretty frequently. We can assume they've always had some sort of cooking implement. We know they had a kettle which is uh, knocked over again. This guy this guy always knocks over the tea kettles. He also knocks over his teacup. That's so rude. Like, who does that? But yeah, so he knocks over the drinks again after storming out, getting really mad. He probably is frustrated with how this guy is still staring at what is kind of recognizable as the castle off in the distance over here. And, uh... This woman is also just ignoring the whole event. She's pretending this guy's not leaving, or she's just unwilling to look at it, and instead, maybe she still supports this man, maybe she doesn't. But the important thing is that she doesn't want to acknowledge the the things happening around her. She's she's lost face to an extent. And, uh, yeah, that's this image. There's also another piece of paper knocked on the ground there. Uh, side note, I really like these rocks. I uh, had a great time drawing them. They're very pretty rocks. That's that's kind of irrelevant. <laughs> so, we're moving up to the second last image in the series, and that one is... This is my personal favorite from the series. Um, it's a very simple image. It does not have nearly as many characters as the previous ones did, but that's because the backpack that this woman's been carrying the whole series is... Um, well, it's, it's never really been directly her bag until this point, but it's on her back right now. And, it, you know, they've put the, or you can assume they've put the firing pan and the tea kettle and the cups in this bag. Uh, they don't have any guns between them, and they don't have any, they don't really have that many resources. This guy's taken, across, taken apart the pole he's been using for the lantern this entire time, slung the rope that he was tying the pole together. We can actually check that. I've always had a knot worked around the lantern pole. It's been tied the same way, I think. Yeah, each time it's tied the same way. Which I, I spent a, a pretty decent amount of time on that. So he's he's taken that knot apart and probably combined it with another piece of rope and tied it over his shoulder like this so he could carry the lantern and a shovel. And uh, he's is a, if you have a shovel head like this, you can just get a uh, couple nails or some rivets and hammer them in. And uh, that's probably pretty easy with a bunch of rocks around. So that's that's how they would have made the shovel. Uh, yeah, we knew there was a shovel head in the last image. Also, we can see the map here. It's This is another fun thing. It's the topography that we saw in Explorer 4 on the table here, except it's not all of this. It's only about this square right here. 
um, we've always known that the castle has been on. Oh wait, actually, I can find another example of that in Explorer 4. The castle's always been on a hill, as marked here and here, but we've seen it a few other times in these images, where there's this castle on the mountains off in the distance. It's a little bit darker in this one, but you can still see it. Can't see it in this one, but back in this one you can see there's a sharp cliff, cliff face on one that descends into a prairie, and the hills are all going down around it. So when we get to this image and we're looking at this castle, we can see it's on a sharp cliff face going this way. It's on a little bit more gradual of a decline. In the middle here, there's a large shadow as well as some cross hatching, which I decided to be swamps and water, where they're currently moving and where they were in that last image. And then the X's here are the various places they stopped, being this is the place where they docked, they moved um, through the temples here and underground. Then they stopped here at the temples where the other man quit. Then this is their next planned campsite, and this is a castle. Now, uh, aside from that sort of map work, this image doesn't have much else for strong story, aside from, of course, our, uh, our female protagonist's face, which I, I didn't want to make it look like she was appalled or overly afraid. I just wanted her to look kind of sad. Like, it's a realization that she's not... There's a snake biting her arm. She knows what this is. She, to an extent, knows what it means, but it's not something she's afraid of. She's just looking at it in, in a sort of numb shock, and that's that's the that's the expression I was going for, and I I think I got that pretty well. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, this image is pretty straightforward. We can see the patches that they put onto the bag. Um, I was briefly planning having a part of the series, which would be an intermission, that would cancel the the very uh, prevalent narrative elements, like having the explorer always in this quadrant and always moving towards a dark objective in this corner of the image. And uh, I was planning on having a two-image series where you would see them, no one would die in those images, and it would be them sort of recuperating and getting the tension out, patching the holes. This guy's got a hole on his pants knee that he patches between... Um, Oh, actually, we never see it patched because I didn't make those images. Yeah, he's got a hole on his knee that was uh, torn probably sometime during the shipwreck. And, uh, yeah, I guess that hole never gets patched because I didn't make those images. Because um, this is what happens in the last image. His leg gets torn right off. <laughs> Bit of a jump. But, uh, yeah, so um, this, is, this is the end of our adventure as the last of the party members is gone fallen. He's, he didn't end up making it to his castle, and he'll never claim the treasures or whatever sort of spiritual fulfillment he would have gotten from it. This image is a pretty a pretty enjoyable one for me. I had a lot of fun making it, and I the only changes I made between it and the finalized version was sharpening the lights a bit and making the this part of the image a little bit brighter, because I felt it was, it was too dark and also adding some texture to the leaves. Uh, what happens in this image, I, I think is actually something worth discussing. The the wolves are one thing, they're um... it's a little bit uh, awkward the way these wolves have been positioned and what I, what I had planned for them is that we have our explorer sitting here, he's buried the woman, for better or for worse, and we can tell he's had his shovel out. He's got this large pile of rocks. We can see there's some dragging, so he dragged this log over exhausted, and it's probably getting ready to make something to eat or have a cup of tea. The fire's burned down. There's no logs in it. There's just some ashes. The fire is a little bit brighter than its surrounding area, so we can tell that it was lit for a while. But he's still got his lantern on the pile of dirt after working here, so he's probably very tired. He hears the wolves coming at him from off on this side of the image, and starts backing up this way when one wolf runs at him. He's still holding the shovel because he was working, and he backs up this way as the wolf approaches, hits the wolf over the head, breaking the shovel head, as you can tell it's out of line, but also putting a serious dent in this wolf's skull and knocking it unconscious or killing it. He's backed up to about here. This wolf comes up behind him, bites out the side of his neck, and he falls backwards onto the stone, and the wolves sort of tear into him. And, uh... That's the end. <laughs> 
there's a few more things. 